it's time for this. The World of Woke. Now, anyone who's a regular viewer to the Independent Republic will know my views on the eco-nuttery that has afflicted much of this government's policies on the green agenda, all for the holy grail of the net zero crusade. We've got the fines you pay for polluting the air in your car that do nothing about the air quality, but plenty for the coffers of the state. We've got the recycling nonsense that results in less recycled goods and more rubbish in the landfills. And we've got the politicians and virtue-signalling celebs who whiz around in private jets and helicopters all the while telling us to take the train. Hypocrisy, ladies and gentlemen, is the name of the game. And today, it is no different. The climate change fanatics have come up with a new word for the destruction of the planet. This is this, ecocide. Not content with calling people who disagree with them climate deniers, evoking a kind of Holocaust-like alarm into the argument, they now want to use a word that sounds worryingly like something you can be charged with criminally. So far, they've managed only to accuse Britain's biggest power station, though, of the crime. Drax, up in North Yorkshire, is currently involved in one of the least environmentally friendly methods of producing energy, and it's all in the name of the environment. In an effort to go green, Drax stopped burning local coal and changed over to wood pellet fuel because it's better for the climate, they said. Trouble is, the wood pellets come from primary and old growth forests in British Columbia, and three different eco-campaigning groups are accusing them of exploiting rare and irreplaceable woodlands and unique habitats with ecological functions. Drax insists that all heirloom fuel that they use comes from sustainable sources. Well, they would say that, wouldn't they? But you can't regrow forests that have been there for centuries in anything less than, well, centuries. And it doesn't help that the wood is transported from Canada on diesel-powered ships, all of which makes a mockery of the fact that we are now subsidising the entire shebang. Environment environmentalists, including Greenpeace and Friends of the Earth, now argue that cutting down forests is no way to save the planet no matter what the government says about how bioenergy is the future. One said, the evidence is clear. Bioenergy fails on every metric. It fails to secure our energy security, fails to ensure value for money for the public purse, fails to help reach net zero, and fails to preserve biodiversity or protect human health. Basically sounds like a fail all round. And to think that I was ridiculed for saying cutting down trees wasn't sustainable. Apparently Greenpeace now agrees with me. It's a funny old world, isn't it? The world of woke. The world of work. Now, the panel's all still here. Let's look at some of the other stories knocking around. My favourite, I think, is the Joe Biden one. Um, he says doctors have checked him over and he's absolutely fine. But guess what? They didn't have to give him any kind of cognitive test because apparently it wasn't required. Huh? Well, I mean, I, yeah. how do you get to that conclusion? Yeah, I mean, you think that would be the primary function yeah. for one of the leaders of the free thought, world? <laughs> but given that, you know, this week alone, he was talking about Donald Trump on a talk show, losing um, track of his argument. And while he was in the middle of it, he lost track of his own argument. Then he was seen holding an ice cream while announcing there might be a, um, a peace deal in the offing in Gaza. And you're just thinking, come on, if you're a doctor, surely you're going, we should really ask him to count backwards from 99 uh, and maybe ask him who was president of the United States in 1949. Well, I remember that they tried to make Donald Trump take this cognitive test yeah. constantly throughout his presidency. Yeah. The Democrats were banging on about how they needed to uh, invoke Article 25, I think, of the Constitution to say that he's mentally unfit to be right. president and things like that. And yet Joe Biden seems to get an easy ride from the press, although Funny that. Um, the Democrat re recently looks like a lot more sort of friendly Democrat press, press like the New York Times are actually starting to criticise They him. did turn on him, didn't they, in that press conference after the, the news that he wasn't going to be prosecuted for removing the, the, um, the National Secure files. Yeah. And they said, well, we're not going to prosecute him because he's an elderly gentleman with a very bad memory. It just makes you wonder whether you get to that Democratic convention mm. over the summer and whether people just turn on because that is the, yeah. mo that's the, the, that's mo the word, mo moment it? of no return. That's the word that, that, that it might happen. Yeah. And depending on who I speak to, it either definitely will happen or it's definitely not going to happen. But who so. is the successor, though? Well, it's not Michelle Obama. I'm pretty sure. And we hope it's not I think it's probably Gavin Newsom in California. I think so. They speak about Dean Phillips as well. But is that I... the woman from Michigan? No, it's a man, isn't it? Is it? Yes. I mean, well, who I don't knows? Think, I don't think he's got a lot of name recognition, there's a woman in, in There's a woman governor in Michigan who keeps getting mentioned, but I can't remember her name. So. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's funny, isn't it, when Biden tried to host this press conference to say that he's mentally fit and stuff, yeah. and then he suddenly got the president of Egypt yes. and Mexico. And Mexico. And his name mixed up. Mixed up. 
It's quite sad, really. It's quite sad. He did the same with Meter on and Macron. Yeah. I mean, the <laughs> generations apart. Yeah. And Cole. I think Helmut Cole yeah, got yeah. mentioned and as Merkel, well. Now, that's just been going on for ages. So the idea that any doctor has passed him as fit is but absolutely Biden ludicrous. Biden made quite a funny joke, I think, to be fair to him, saying that they said he looked too young. I think, right. Which, I mean, which he obviously knows the criticism about yeah, him. Yeah. And, yeah. Which is quite a good moment from him, really. I suppose so. <laughs> I mean, it shows that he does still have a bit of a sense of humour. Yeah. Speaking of politic politicians with sense of humours, um, there's a great story in The Sun tonight about Matt Hancock, who apparently, for some bizarre reason, went to speak at Eton. Yeah. I can't imagine why he would have done that. Um, but he went to, um, to make his speech and he started having to go at Jacob Rees-Mogg without realising that his son was actually in the audience, yeah. who he, gave him a bit back, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, uh, Hancock turned around and said, oh, this Jacob Rees-Mogg chap, who I sit next to in the Commons, is not a good politician. Little right. did know that young Peter Rees-Mogg, <laughs> age 16, was in the audience and turned around and said, actually, he's a very fine man, um, especially um, um, he's loyal to his wife. Yeah, he didn't leave his wife. No, yeah. exactly. Very I mean, nice. There's some quotes from Jacob Rees-Mogg tonight, you know, you know, sticking by his son, and Peter was brave to stand up yeah. to, to Matt Hancock in front of all his, all his peers and I mean, say that. It's good that. to know that Hancock just still hasn't got it. Yeah. <laughs> Wherever he goes, he just puts two feet right in it, doesn't he? But it's so interesting because it's, you know, the, se the colleagues in the same party sort of taking pot shots yeah. at each other. And it's the two caucuses of the Tory party, the right and the liberals. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, though. That's what's ruined them. I mean, yes. they've always been they've yes. always been on the brink of ruin. But you know, in the last what two years, three years since Boris was, you know, unseated, they've never been anything but completely riven in at least two or three different bits. Yeah, no, they, the, the whole it seems like then you've got the five families for a start. You've got all these different parts of yeah. the party that. Um, it's very difficult. But meanwhile, Liz Truss is sort of, you know, disappearing <laughs> talk, off into... Talking about the deep state continuously. Well, yeah, absolutely right. Well, she's right. the libertarian. I mean, that's why she is the way she is. Yeah. She just attracts all the eccentrics, no. all the do, cranks. Do you know, it's funny. When I was at school, yeah. I had, we, we had a talk from John Burko. Oh, yeah. And he was saying... I remember him saying, we should give three cheers to democracy. Our democracy is fantastic. And I, we could do a little Q&A thing. Yeah. I put my hand up and said, oh, but Mr Burko... What about the fact that UKIP have just got four million votes and one MP? Right. How can we give three cheers to democracy? Right. And he was very, very unhappy with me. And I remember, so <laughs> this kind of banter between teenagers. I mean, I was about 15 at right. the time. That's it's good, quite, though. No, it's quite good. It's, I enjoy, I'm, glad, I'm glad Matt is coming to speak, I guess it's to Eton, so not exactly yes. sort of, you know. Um, I mean, I don't know what he's trying to prove by going to speak at Eaton. Well, you know, maybe he's hoping to meet probably. the parents mm. of some rich foreign kids. I mean, kids. really. I um, mean, can you, you know. imagine the amount in fees that you pay to send your child to yeah. Eaton? And then Matt Hancock is coming to talk yeah. to them. Though, but he's another one who's so kind of brazen about... I mean, if I was Matt Hancock, I don't think I'd ever want to be seen in public again. <laughs> feels like he's been so on embarrassed. several reality shows. Oh, he has? Like tens of thousands <laughs> yeah. of pounds. And you just process. be like, just go away. Mm. Just stop. I think he's standing down at the next election. So he's, he is, yeah. yeah. So he's, a, he's, he's now an independent MP. He didn't get the whip back. Right. So, um, well, I think at yeah. one point he thought he was going to in, in, in sort of start on some new television sort of personality oh, totally. uh, career, but I'm afraid... He's not very good. Well, there was a Tory MP, I think, in the 50s, in the Profumo affair, mm. where after that he famously went off and yes. basically just quit politics completely. I think yeah. it was Profumo. And Profumo yeah. himself, yeah. right? Yeah. And he just... He went and did good works in Calcutta. Yes. Or something. Yes. Yeah, with homeless people right. and things like that for about 18 years and yeah. never talked about it again. I think Matt Hancock can learn a few lessons. But really could did. you imagine the politicians of that era trying to get into reality television afterwards? They wouldn't. They have no. so much gravitas. Yes, it's so ashamed. Yeah. So he does about no. Prince Andrew. That's probably what Prince Andrew does. What does John, what John Profumo did? Yeah. He actually goes out to East London and works in the, the charity mm. sector and just gets on with his life that yeah. way and actually does something fulfilling. Well, that might be good. One final one for you, and this is kind of related as well to the, to the figures from the, uh, from the Home Office. Britain's prison population expected to boom over the next four years, but 115,000 convicts are expected to be being held, but there's only space for 90. Now, my maths isn't brilliant, but that looks like about 20-odd thousand... Um, too many. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, recently a Tory, a Tory minister was talking about the fact they're going to start deporting foreign criminals. Yeah. Why haven't they done this? They've been in exactly. power for 14 years. I know. It's this is like... all, you know, here's some new policy. Well, how about you just do what you said you were going to do? It's just unbelievable.